Cool side film, Ben, trying to. Starting off the news this week, researchers are saying that Greenland's giant ice sheet could have melted more this year than any other year. The melting this year from just this alone is enough to raise the global average sea levels by over a millimetre. This raises already present fears for the long term future of the coastal cities of the world. Greenland itself is so important in studying rising sea levels because it holds enough ice to raise sea levels by up to 7 metres, although this event would likely take thousands of years. However, the oceans do not need to rise by 7 metres to threaten those living in areas close to sea level. It is likely that places like Florida, Bangladesh and the eastern part of England will be badly affected by rising sea levels within the century. In other news, the outlook of the Great Barrier Reef has been officially changed to very poor, down from poor, by a five-year report made by the Australian government. The massive damage that has befallen the Great Barrier Reef in recent years is due to anthropogenic climate change, that being climate change caused by humanity's actions. This is a really important and complicated subject, so I won't go into it now. However, I'll put a link down below to the channel One World, where Dr Nikki Thomas has done a video where she talks about this in far more detail, so go and check it out. Also this week, a brand new species of living beaked whale has been named. Recognised by local whalers in Japan as a separate animal to the Baird's beaked whales in the area, this distinct type of whale had previously undergone genetic tests which indeed determined that they were a new species, and now a morphological analysis has been published in Nature that also concludes that these are a unique taxon. Now being named Baradius minimus, this is the third species within the Baradius genus, and it has been shown as distinct to the other species due to their smaller overall size, darker colour and shorter beaks. In the world of paleontology this week, a very cool find from 3.8 million year old rocks in Ethiopia has been announced. This is the discovery of an almost complete hominin cranium which has been referred to the genus and species of Australopithecus anamensis. Not only does this fossil give us the best look at the whole morphology of the cranium and face of the first species within the Australopithecus genus, but it also provides evidence against the widely accepted idea that this species evolved into Australopithecus afarensis, the species which the famous Lucy specimen belongs to. Instead, it now seems that there was more of a branching evolution going on, not a gradual transition from one species to the other. This is because this new find comes from a slightly more recent time than fossils of A. anamensis were, up until now, known from, meaning that the two species in fact overlapped with each other for around 100,000 years. Also in the paleontology news, a slightly tragic but also kind of funny fossil has been described. Recently, excavations of late Jurassic Age rocks in the Swiss Jura Mountains have revealed thousands of dinosaur footprints, as well as many fossils of prehistoric marine turtles. Unfortunately, on one occasion it seems that these two types of fossils mixed, as there is a particular turtle fossil which was discovered embedded just below a sauropod track level, and, according to the paper, the configuration of the fossil turtle seems to indicate that this poor animal was trodden on by one of the massive sauropods. A sad but fascinating little bit of extinct animal behaviour preserved in these rocks for millions of years. And finally, the idea of a ghost lineage of Dicynodonts seems to have been disproven this week. These non-mammalian therapsids from the Permian and Triassic were thought to have all died out in the Triassic extinction event. However, a very fragmentary fossil, thought to be possibly a Dicynodont, was actually found in Cretaceous rocks in Australia suggesting that perhaps these animals had managed to survive the Triassic. But this new paper has reanalyzed the fossil, finding that it did in fact belong to a Cenozoic mammal, not a Dicynodont. So Dicynodonts are, sadly, definitely long dead. Thank you very much for watching this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, we'll see you on Sunday.